Now to our first um, conversation, we see the first half of 2024, the Nigerian currency depreciated by nearly um, 40%. Uh, besides Naira, we also see the Egyptian pound and Ghana CD, they're also among the worst performers in the first six months of the year. Uh, meanwhile, the Kenyan shilling there, that shined about 20.7%, uh, ranking as the best uh, performer. And uh, there's also the issue of the proposal to amend the CBN Act. How would this impact um, the long-term performance of the Naira and economic stability if the CBN Act uh, Amendment Act proposal becomes law. Joining us for this conversation is Ogbonna Ukuku, is investment and economic uh, development expert. Joining us from Abuja studio. Um, great to have you on the show. Happy new month. Happy um, first day of the second half and happy first day of the third quarter. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Right. So looking at some of the major currencies in Africa, it, it, it was quite tough uh, the first half of uh, 2024. How are you seeing this and what is this telling us about um, African currency weakness, you know, at this time with um, geopolitical turmoil? Um, generally speaking, um, African countries must. Um, it, it, it just tells the story of the African um, economies. So what we, what it shows is that we have to pay attention on being productive and then again being able to depend more on locally made goods and then have enough to give to the outside world. Because if we don't export, if you don't have what to export, you won't actually have dollars in your economy. Because I mean, you can't print dollar, you can only earn dollars. So if you don't have what to give to the world to earn dollar, you just you would definitely def depend on FX, which, you know, for you to import the things that you need. So our basic needs at this point, uh, we need to actually rejig our taste gland or we begin to, our, you know, curb our appetite, you know, to, you know, face more on things that we can't produce locally and then be able to, um, you know, you know, show up some of this uh, trade imbalance that exists between Africa and other countries. Um, quite uh, turbulent for these currencies. What are you expecting for the second half of 2024 for the Naira especially? Is there some kind of um, soft landing we can expect for the Naira in the second half? And um, what do I expect? So the, the direction the central bank is going, yes, is good. The interventions are, are good because the more they continue to intervene, the more they will support the, the FX market. So, but that, having said that, I, I expect um, additional interventions as regards when it comes to long term, looking at things like um, being uh, supporting the productive sector, supporting raw material supply, supporting you know um, interventions that will go directly to um, to manufacturers. I think um, with that in place and many more on having a, a well structured financial engineering that would um, you know help to reduce the cost of production. I think that would um, definitely go a long way in helping us, you know, come out of this um, turmoil. And talking about the central bank, um, especially uh, the central bank of Nigeria, we see that controversy trailing the CBN Act amendment uh, bill there. Uh, some say that it will undermine the autonomy of the central bank of Nigeria, but the proponents say that it's merely to allow the CBN and the Ministry of Finance work together. So talk to me, if this amendment becomes law, What's the worst that could happen? Okay, so for me to um, answer your question, it would be very good for um, our viewers to understand that. Just like um, you have three tiers of government when it comes to governance or when you want to deliver government, they are all working towards the same direction, and then, but they are all autonomous. And then you have you know, the three arms of government working towards the same goal but operating from different angles. It's the same way when it comes to the economic stance. The policy, uh, the, the, the monetary policy and fiscal policy must work independently but have a convergence. I always give this very simple illustration, still very instructive while it looks as if you're not saying, the, you know, you're not being very serious. You see the way soccer game is, it, the, the physical policy managers are like the strikers. And then the monetary policy managers are like the defenders. So the victory of any team is dependent more on what the strikers do than what the defenders do. 
So if you merge them all together, there's going to be a confusion because you can't have someone who's defending striking at the same time. So it brings this confusion and at the end of the day, you will not be able to succeed. So nations of the world have started paying attention to, to corporate governance when it comes to the leadership of their central bank. But you see, I give you a very simple example. In 2012, the, 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 in England, they appointed a Canadian to be the head of their central bank. So what that means is that the attention they pay to monetary policy stance is so crucial that they had to even go outside their sphere to go somewhere, another man's country, to get someone to head their central bank because of the, the kind of job that the Canadian central bank uh, governor did in his in, in country. So what that means is, is more about paying attention to the corporate governance structure of your central bank, not you know, creating laws around um, bringing them together. No, you can't bring them together. They must be autonomous. They must do their job and they do it separately. But like I said, there has to be that place of confluence. I like what the South African government does when it comes to recruitment. So before you become a central bank governor, yes, the president appoints maybe four, um, uh, four uh, I think about eight. There are 15 of them. The, the president appoints uh, um, eight of them. Then the order appointments will come from stakeholders. Stakeholders in the sense that you, they must be experts in agriculture. You must have someone who's an expert in, um, in uh, mining because their economy is, you know, has a, a lot of mining. They do a lot of mining. Then someone who has expertise or two of them will have expertise in commerce and industry. So these are things we must pay attention to. You see, in Nigeria, the kind of things we pay attention to is we have the board you have people representing South East, South West. No, those are the, not the kind of things. Because when it comes to, you know, driving economy, because you don't win economic wars, just like every conventional war, you win by strategy. It's not by uh, strength alone. You win by strategy. So the strategy of knowing what you need per time, appointing the right people, putting the right people in place, that's exactly what you need to grow your economy. So it's not about having a law that will pull everybody together or you have to oversee their, 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 their budget and all of that. For, no, for, for me, it's beyond that because the negatives are much more than the positives. Right, and, but some argue that you know, central banks don't really have that much autonomy, you know, really, that there's always some form of you know, political um, influence. Uh, we saw the ways that means um, issue with the last uh, leadership of the central bank. We've also, and they also don't want uh, a central bank governor that want to uh, contest for the presidency you know, at, at some point. So um, talk to me about you know, the powers around the central bank governor at this time. Does it need to be decentralized somewhat? No, like I said earlier, see, if you look at other countries and see how, you know, it's all about recruitment. Because if you recruit the right person, you know, that's something we call um, in leadership, you call a public value proposition. And then look at individuals, look at their public value proposition. Are they people who have tendencies of becoming a president tomorrow? See, central bank has to be headed by 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 experts. I use experts in plural because it's not just a one man thing. So it must have a very strong, robust board. So the board must have experts who understand economic dynamics, understand how to get your economy working. They need to have, they have, they must have credible records. People who can actually, there are no spots in their CVs. So these are the kind of people you recruit. So the world is paying attention to corporate governance as against having you know, individuals who don't understand what it takes to be there. Yes, the ways I mean, those are things that occurred in the past administration, and, 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 and I can see that the leadership of the central bank now, you can't find, you know, people with those kind of, um, you, know, you know, those kind of records. And then who says that the person has to be a banker? to be a central bank governor. There's no, there's, there's no, you don't need, you need experts who understand economic development, people who understand the economy and how the economics are around running a nation. That's what you need. Those are the kind of people you need to, 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 head, your, to head your central bank. So what I'm saying in essence, in essence is, the board has to be strong. It has to be a robust board. So it's not a one-man thing. So it won't be a central bank where you're mentioning just one person's name. It has to be a central bank where you're... When you talk about central bank, you're talking about a team of people who understand what it takes to run an economy. All right, let, let's look at uh, the battle against uh, inflation at this time. I uh, will see, you know, uh, most uh, central bankers in developed economies, they're already nearing their inflation targets um, at this time. And we've seen right here in Nigeria, the inflation keeps going up, but we're seeing some kind of um, slower pace 
of inflation um, in Nigeria. So um, talk to me about what the CBN has done so far in the first half to try and arrest um, inflation and what you expect for the second half of 2024. Do you see more interest rate hikes? Are rates going to stay higher for much, much longer? Now, for the meantime, I think um, what I see is the central bank still, you know, the, the interest rate will still go up a bit more until you see, um, uh, you know, see in, in improvement or in, increase when it comes to development, when it comes to infrastructure development that will support productivity. So, I um, mean, looking at it, like I said in my initial illustration, is more of what the fiscal policy managers are doing because the federal government needs to actually um, activate a whole lot of um, activities, you know, interventions that will support the manufacturing sector, that will support um, alternative funding, uh, alternative income for uh, foreign exchange, because all these things are the things, when, when you have a, 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 you know, your foreign ex exchange depreciating, it also um, adds to your inflation because it actually adds a lot of um, cost to those who are importing. Like I said earlier, we are importing a whole lot. And that importation is coming at a very high cost because we are still taking efforts to import some of these things that we need. Basic commodities that we need are being imported. So that will also, it, things won't change immediately. But I think in the long run, if those interventions are taken care of, I mean, you can't have, um, you can't have um, uh, um, you know, uh, a development finance institution like the Nexim Bank. They, they, their records should show that export has actually increased to a very large extent that is supporting the oil sector, then we, we, the, the income coming from the oil sector, we need to actually you know, focus a bit more to find out how we're going to add value to whatever we're doing to our oil and gas so that our income, uh, our income should, uh, in, in, in foreign exchange, should come and come complete. So the production has to increase. So those are the things I'm talking about. So it has to be more of what... Um, the, the fiscal policy managers are doing than what the, 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 the monetary policy managers are doing. Looking at where we are right now with inflation, food inflation, and the currency um, at this time, in your mind, looking at the, the way um, the, fiscal, uh, the fiscal side is working and the monetary side is working, in your mind, when do you estimate that we can actually see um, notable improvement when it comes to inflation and uh, food inflation? Now you see, um, when it comes to uh, um, those, um, when it, for it to come to, down to uh, consumers walking into shops and see things, um, you know, cheaper. Now, I, if if an importer, take, you know, um, buys buys his or her goods with um, with a higher, in, you know, exchange rate, those goods have to go off the shelf before um, they can import the next cycle. So it's from that next cycle, which will take at least three, four months, or let's say before the end of this second half, that's when we'll begin to see a lot of changes when it comes to prices. And again, like I said, if we continue to intervene when it comes to product, local production, that is very key. If we use our development finance institutions to support local production, that will help us a whole lot. And I'm paying attention to develop, de, de, uh, our, our, uh, our development finance institutions because, I mean, they are, they, 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 they are liable to, to, to stakeholders while uh, commercial banks are liable to shareholders. So shareholders want profit, but development finance institutions, they want growth and development in a nation. So that they should support, they should be made robust, they should recapitalize most of our development finance institutions and give them targets to make sure our MSMEs, our agri-sector, begins you know becomes very robust and then will become self-sufficient all right i definitely hope that um, the second half of 2024 will see some kind of soft landing um for the naira and the economy in general thank you so much uh Bona Okuku, investment and uh, economic development uh, expert thank you so much for joining us today all right thanks for having me all right we'll take a break now when we come back we'll be looking at trade facilitation right here in nigeria that's our next conversation just stay with us <laughs> 